I have a couple things I, I, I need to complain about. Uh, please talk. Uh, and Russ, I'm sure you have things. I haven't seen you. We went to Houston, and I knew you'd need a reset from me. Yeah. You vanished text-wise until now. I vanished from everyone. Listen, I am drowning right now, and I'm a bit numb. And so I feel a bit depressed because I'm because I'm numb. I'm like I'm not excited about anything. I'm just on this hamster wheel of doing these shows and working, and and it it I I am on a loop right now, and I'm and I'm, I'm I'm struggling to breathe. Well, we're so excited to have you here today. <laughs> um. Way to bring up the energy, Russ. <laughs> I'm uh, depressed, uh, Joya. <laughs> now this is coming out. So, so this is coming out after this happens, so we can talk freely. You, he, you have a new agent. He's seeing you tomorrow. Yes, and he hasn't seen you before. Uh, just like tape, a tape. just like tape. Nice, like, but but the real impression. I mean, I it's, it's and I'm nervous. It's a which type crowd. of agent? Um, at Gersh, um, legit. Um, uh, so um, across the board. Yeah. Nice. Um, so. Um, yeah, I'm a little nervous because it's one of those things too. It's a Tuesday night, like it's if I was like night. a Saturday night crowd or even a Sunday night crowd. Those are our best crowds. Thursday through Thursday through Sunday are reliable. It, it's better than a Sunday matinee. I'll say that. But yeah. Tuesday night, it's 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 like please, please. I just wonder. Are you in a Broadway play? Uh, I'm in, in a Titanic off Broadway musical. <laughs> oh, I heard about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to come see that. Come see it. Come oh see it. Oh my goodness! Come tomorrow, that is, Tuesday. Um, is it Union? It's near Union yes. Square. Yeah. I was okay. I did a show with Jessica Kirsten and dropped her off to go see that. She came yeah. and saw it. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had known she was there. I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, fuck. We get around yeah. the goddamn show. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna come. I'm just wondering with with Tova how because she can put on a laugh if she wants to. Yeah. And but she knows she she's gonna go tomorrow with the agent. Okay. And so, you know, Tova wants it to go well, too. Yeah. And I'm just curious, like, how she's going to monitor how hard she laughs at your part. <laughs> I Listen, think she's... I've been in a play when Tova was in the crowd, and I heard her. Yeah. For I sure. forgot I saw your play yes. at 59 I, 59. I yeah. do have a couple other friends going, too, which I, like, just by chance. And so that's, sure. that's good. Um, it's good, but it still it's a big room. You can't yeah, you, you can't you, you can't, can't sway the room unless you bring well, in a hundred people. The there. other day, one of one of the new cast members had about fifty people in the in the audience yesterday. And were they murdering? Uh, yeah, they went well. You know, it's like it's not a huge comedic part, but it's like they they have two big songs. Like we're so like they got like. Well, you big. know, I'm a bad laugher, so I won't be there. Don't you worry. Oh, I know. Um, I know. <laughs> I'm a great laugher. Are you a great laugher? Yes, but I have a I have a laugh that is a little might be distracting sometimes because it's like an old black woman laugh. So uh huh. You know, <laughs> was it old, was it always an old black woman laugh? Oh, when no, you were I, a young as black I've gotten woman? older, yeah. <laughs> it's been old. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, <laughs> like I'm you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very but that um, can be good. I, root I, chakra. Whenever I have like a really tough audience, I've always wanted to experiment with like the good laughers I know in my life. I'm like, would one good laugher mm -hmm. change this whole room? I think it could. Yeah, I know a couple of people whose laughs is so funny in and of itself. Yeah, that they they grease the wheels. Yeah, and I believe if you got them there. Let, let me tell you something. I Saturday night, they had, we had the craziest crowd we've had, and I've been doing the show since November. We had the craziest crowd we've ever had Saturday night. Uh -huh. I mean, it was like they were standing O's during the show. They were they were dancing. They were getting up in the aisles. They were they were wild, like wild people mm -hmm. screaming. It was great. It was great. <laughs> Good wild. Yeah, and then. Uh, th th from the highest of highs to the Sunday matinee was definitely the worst crowd we've ever had. Yes. These were people weren't even applauding at the ends of songs. Mm. Like they, they're like they, they collectively a whole group, 300 people. They were either going to kill themselves that day or <laughs> they were going to go see Titanic and they all decided to go see Titanic. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming to my show worst. today. It was the craziest whiplash to be like, we yeah. really felt like we were like, yeah, this is this the greatest show in New York. And then the next day, uh, not one of those people. It was it was really demoralizing. That's God. God yeah. keeps you humble. When, yes. when I was in, this is before I was a stand-up comedian, but I think these were the signs. I, I did a show. It was called On the Razzle in high school. Yes, and you did. I was, I was Look like. Look at your On the Razzle shoulders. Oh, my God. <laughs> on the Razzle. <laughs> And I, it was British, and I was I was like the fun servant quirky character. Sure. And, and you know, we were killing at yeah. least we thought we were killing. And then we had a matinee once. Yep. And like nothing was popping. And then during the intermission, I went back to the director. And I was like, why aren't they laughing? 
It's you. <laughs> why? Why aren't they <laughs> laughing? And I cried. Yeah. And it was because it was like that first time in my life I really got a taste of like, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. They don't like you, or they're I don't, not in I'm the mood. I'm not used to. It. I like. I know. I, really, I love you. Experience. I really it. hate it. I hate. I'm doing, not used to he gets, it. No. He, he gets said so I can't mad. Relate. I get so mad. He gets so mad, and, and I, you know, because he, he's like sketch comedian, and yeah. so usually the and shows we, are we, big. It's a hot show every time. Yeah, you're doing it once a month or at the most. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so and so now that it's more regular. It's especially going into that Sunday matinee because it's usually that's reliably the quietest crowd. Um, and it's also the older crowd. And Listen. it's a it's a you know, it's a very, you know, the show it is what it is. It's not really designed yeah. for older crowd people. So it, it's just one of those things where I, I get so mad. I get in fights get in my head with specific audience members where I'm like, why the fuck are you here today? Go, <laughs> go. I can relate. Get out of here. You don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. I'm not a big laugher, and I might still want to be somewhere. Well, I can tell but the your difference. Face people, will the face will be different. Yes, there's people that don't. Sure, I'd be. Making, your arms ain't crossed. Mm. Yeah, there's people that are like they're like they're smiling and they're present. If you were a stand-up comedian, would be one of the guys like you having a good time? Well, tell it to your face. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. When I did the play, so luckily you are downtown a bit. Mm -hmm. I was uptown off Broadway. Okay. 59 East 59. Mm -hmm. That has uh, youngest people are 59. So, <laughs> I mean, we are literally in there like senior citizens. And while the, the run was interesting, but those older crowds, man, they will be looking at you. Jessica Kirsten does a great impression of what oh, these yes, women would sound like. Like I need to take my, I don't know, pills or something. And it was, it was a play. I mean, it was a play. It was a play. It was and, a play. But I got to Time yell at people. Was it, was it a whole? Uh, were you the? Is it one person or a whole cast? It was a cast. It okay. was a cast. It was how long epic. we talking? Uh, over two, Russell, two, it was a long play. Two hours and twenty minutes. Two hours twenty minutes. Okay, and how long did you do that run for? 28 performances. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say 28. And you got old in it, right? Weeks. Didn't you get uh, old or you I got didn't get drunk? I old, but I did get drunk. You did get drunk. That was a character choice that I chose. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I got old, but like through time, maybe like a decade in it. Was it a comedy? Two. Yes. Yes. A two hour and 20 minute comedy. Yes. And a, and a complex comedy. Car wow. Multiple, multiple a characters. Piece. A period wow. piece. Yes. Was it an old play or a new play? A new play. A new play. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Tobas Klein? Yes. Yeah. It's another wow. Milberman mob member. <laughs> yeah. That's how show um, business works. You're either with Milberman or you're, you're not. Or you're not. not. Or you're not. So, um, yeah. So, I, but I can relate to that going into the, like, the double, the two a days the where you're just like, <sighs> Yeah, I, I have to kind of now be like almost treat it like um, this is not not no, I'm not saying this is like I'm not doing a good job when I do it, but I have to think of it as the warm up for the night because I have to be like I really have to figure out my mind right now because I'm. I'm struggling. I'm getting in fights. I'm getting so angry. In your head. I'm getting so angry. It, and it's like it's like it's almost like a math equation. If I don't get every single laugh that I have programmed where they need to be. I Rosalie, am Rosalie, like, you are, I'm you are, spiraling. You are crazy. I'm like, I'm like uh, analyzing, like, why did this work this one? T why does this work 90% of the time? It doesn't work. You know what I mean? And then I'm like, do I need to change it? Do I need to change it? Because you're doing a long run, so you're constantly questioning, like, I like do I need to change this moment? Do I need to, you know? By the end of this run, you, you've you become me, and I've become you, and you are just <laughs> high strung, <laughs> listening back to sets. Uh, 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 let me play this music. This is The Downside. One. To the downside. The downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Um. Uh. Well, I want to go uh, uh, deep in into. Well, they, I'm going to bring this up. Oh, okay. Okay. So I, I had two things I wanted to talk about. I I was just in a, a Louisville. Oh, by the way, this is the downside. This is a place where where, where you can be negative, complain, kvetch, moan, bitch, whine. Uh, uh, you know, if, if you're if you're feeling good, get out of here. If you're feeling bad, <laughs> you're going to feel a little better in comparison to how we are doing. Um, uh, if you're a fan, join the Patreon, patreon.com slash downside. We just hit, uh, we hit a hundred. Yes. Uh, uh, you know, Tim Dillon's at a hundred thousand. Yep. Uh, we're so right we're you. working, we're working there at 150. We're doing a big bonus episode. We're going to go through the New York times questions of falling in love. Oh yes. And, uh, a uh, hundred thousand episodes. No, no oh Tim, Tim Dillon like has like, you know, oh. 100,000 Patreon he's, supporters. He's just making a mil a oh, month okay. or some shit. I was shit. like yeah. a hundred thousand. 
Um, oh, but 100 people are paying. Can you imagine if we yeah, had yeah, 100 people every very month? Cute. Hey, it's great. It's great. Yeah. We're excited. 250, we'll do one bonus episode a month. We got things. Yeah. I still got to get that tattoo that I promised I'd you get. You got to get a tattoo. Um, so, this thing I want to talk about, I don't know if you saw my tank top. This is a uh, Truckers, truck, Trucking Angels for the Christ. Price. And I went, to, I was in Louisville, and I always try to do, so, I want to, I'm, I'm, done, I'm done with museums. Food is good, but like at a certain point, it's like, oh, good tacos here, or good tacos there. So I'm trying to have an experience that I can only get there. And in Louisville, there was a trucker expo. So I went to, really for people in the industry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not really... Like, I mean, like, like this stand was just about the wheel rim, and this one's just about the horn, yeah. and like, couldn't understand most of it. Yeah, it's not like a comic con thing. Yeah, it's very much designed for truckers. It's niche, <laughs> but but you get you get a sample of like the world. Was that free? No. So uh, I saw there was this. Uh, uh, did you pay twenty five dollars for? How it? did you know that? I, I, that was a really good guess. Can I was going to say twenty to twenty five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I, I was so like, I saw it, I sent it to Tova. I was like, I want to get it. And then I, I <laughs> what she say? She, she, she thought I should get the sweater, but that was like 60 or something. She said, you better sell two extra cum rags tonight, <laughs> baby. But, uh, uh, he sells cum towels as his merch. I, oh, okay. I, I, get I wanted it. to make sure that I wasn't like <laughs> making some weird. <laughs> I, uh, read between the lines. <laughs> So I, I was nervous. I didn't, I'm not, I mean, behind the scenes, but I'm not a rude person in public. I don't want to make these people feel bad uh, for their delusions in, in, in person. So I was nervous they would, could tell I was making fun of them. Yeah. Or, you know, I, I asked, could I try it on over my shirt? Yeah. And I was like, they must know, either they think I'm making fun of them or they think I'm gay, which I don't think they'd be okay with either. I, I was about to say, it doesn't seem like the three of us would be accepted there. Luckily, you don't look uh-huh. the part. <laughs> sure, sure. But the, all three of us together, we are the anti-trucker expo crew. I don't think they can tell that I'm a Jew because I don't think there's a lot of Jews But that's what there. I'm saying. Sure. They, they can't clock you. Yes. They clocking us. Well, if you well, be quiet. Uh, you could fit into the trucking community. I could fit in. Community. I could fit in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, but then, so they gave me this. It comes with a free uh, a Bible of sorts. And then this, which a uh, real life story is Trucker's Edition, yes. volume one. Ambitious. I don't think there's a volume two, but they put the one there just to. Wow. And I was, I was, you know, reading through some of these stories. It's about people coming back to, to Jesus and whatnot. Yeah. And I feel like I had a, a moment of, of revelation, not of the godly kind. Uh-huh. Uh, Because I was reading a lot of these stories about these truck drivers coming back to Jesus in the 30s, 40s, and 50s involved cheating on their wives. Surprise. And I think I had this moment where I said, oh, they converting or like re re uh, uh, connecting to God is a get out of Absolutely. jail card. Mm. Absolutely. And so a lot of these guys, oh, yeah, they they got caught cheating. And like the 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 only way to get out of that is like, baby, I'm going back to church. Born again. I'm recommitting to God. And I yeah. said, fuck, that's why people like th- this happens. All the stories were cheating, and then the wife kicked them out, and then they came back, and she said, "Are you really committing yourself to Jesus?" It was like code mm-hmm. for like, "Are you really committing yourself to yeah. this framework that I would like my life to be?" Oh yeah, I feel the same way. It's like drug addicts too; they'll be born again. Uh huh. And uh-huh. you know, oh, oh, I did some gay shit, and now I'm born again. <laughs> yeah. Like I dabbled. Oh no, Jesus! Like help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's tur- it's fine turning to like a very fit. Uh, man, it's to always save extremes. you from your gayness. They always got to do extremes. But what's interesting, I think, is that in in a non-religious world, we don't necessarily have the kind of forgiveness that is granted in this kind of religious framework. Because all we have is, I'm really sorry. Mm-hmm. I won't do it again. But they get an extra, an extra boost of, I'm Jesus now. Yeah. So I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus now. <laughs> So it was it was just fascinating. What a great great Oh this is oh yeah, okay, wow, this is all new. That's Testament. this Bible verse. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. No excerpts, no paragraphs, you ain't highlighting. You know nothing? what? It was it was really <laughs> I wanted to. It's like dull as fuck. It yeah. could not be more Wait, what page did you get um, to? This is the one that I did look at. Okay. Uh I returned home from that trip. So he did a bunch of drugs. 
I returned home from that trip and confessed to my wife all the things that had been going on in my life. I told her that I had accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. As expected, my wife told me I needed to pack up and leave for good. Wow. <laughs> I knew she had the right to ask me to leave, and I accepted that I had brought all of this on myself. However, I returned three days later to see my son and retrieve some personal items. When I walked through the door, she asked, is it real? Did you really accept Jesus? My response was yes, and then she let me put it in her butt. No! You're, I, no, yeah, no, yes, I made that up, Joy. Oh my God, That's you so had me for a second weird. there. <laughs> I was like, okay, Even a second. Not you You're pushing like, okay. it up. <laughs> my response was yes, that I would serve him with or without her. I told her I would like to be with her. Uh, at that point, we got on our knees. Yes. Seems like we could be getting closer to Miami. Mm -hmm. We got on our knees, and she asked Jesus into her heart. She then turned to me and said, "As of now, we start over." Um. And then we have three sons who have Christian homes and godly wives. Yeah, uh, sure they do. But then at one point, I think this was, um, <laughs> so, so God's looking over him. A lot of help, a lot of love. My 40-year truck driving career ended in 2011 after a major three-truck pileup, which should have ended my life. I walked away from a burning gasoline tanker with injuries that took three months of healing and physical therapy. My wife and I agreed it was time to hang up the keys. I am now the safety director for the same company I was driving for when the accident occurred. I sometimes wonder what kind of God would let me be in a three pile truck driving accident. Not a good God. I'm now an atheist. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you said it was Jamarco. Um, Jamarco. Okay, so these headshots in the back. Um, I feel bad because some of them, did they know that this was going to be on a book? You know what I mean? They, some of them aren't even smiling in those headshots. I mean, one looks like, like a mug selfie. Shots or? Yeah, it's it's so it's it looks like one of those on Twitter. Sometimes they joke about when the replies look like a bunch of January sixth. The dark. Oh, you know. Oh, he didn't know how to light himself. <laughs> <laughs> he looked like he in a witness protection program. Oh, so you know, if you're in Louisville, donate to these people. They do seem nice. This part seems yeah. nice. What's so hard? Is that part of this is nice? It's nice, but I yeah. know they're homophobic. I know they they're for racist. Sure racist. I know yeah. they're transphobic, yeah. and they it hate really everybody. sucks because there's they a hate their wives. because there's a part of it where like these guys are not being helped by my leftist friends in Brooklyn. No, and, but they need a hand. <laughs> they need a therapist. <laughs> they need they need something, yeah. and it really is a conundrum. So uh, uh, that was my that was my downside. How much did it cost to go to this trucker? Convention? Twenty-five dollars. <laughs> I think it. I think it was twenty dollars to just get in the room. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was a huge. What it was is the room like? A rodeo? Oh, like what big, else? No, was it was there? a big expo center. It was like. Oh was there God. anything free? Free food? Free anything? Um, I did get. There was some hot sauce tasting, and then they had a show. They had an arm wrestling competition. Oh, yeah. I thought it was real, but it turned out it was like. Like they did it like it was uh, professional wrestling. Like, like WWE. It was like, I, I wanted to watch, like, basically it was like these two girls were going to go at it. And then this big wrestler was like, I could beat both of you. Yeah. And I was like, no, now it's a show. Yeah. Uh, and then they, and then so, so he was, and he was huge. This guy could have killed both these women in yeah. two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but so he's wrestling one of them and the other girl goes to the side and like distracts him with like her body. Yeah. And he gets distracted like, oh, yeah, look at this. And then the other woman wins. And he goes, she cheated. She cheated. How often do you think they're doing this performance? I mean. Like every hour? I, I, it made me wish when I was a non-union actor, I got to do occasionally some crazy <laughs> shit like that. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? It was kind it's of like fun. It's like Sleep No More, but like for this yes. trucker convention. <laughs> Sleep No More was fantastic. I finally went. Oh, um, yeah? You yes, did? Yes, finally. Oh, I got to take Tova. I don't know if she'd dig it, but it's a... Uh, because it's a solo experience. Like, you walked on your own? No, I was clinging to my boyfriend. Oh, you oh. were? Yeah, I was like, you ain't leaving me. Oh, for me. We I'm... also did shrooms. Oh, so I was like, you can't cool. leave me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm in the darkness. I would have been in a corner somewhere crying. I had a weird experience when I did it. I did it wrong, and I saw, like, the same scene <laughs> three times, and I was like, fuck, how did this happen? Like, You kept I, getting lost? I was so mad because everyone... Everyone I talked to has had such a great time yeah. at that show. For and people at I, home who, in Louisville who don't know what Sleep No More is, it's an interactive. <laughs> it's 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 like a trucking expo, but for gay dancers, <laughs> and everyone wears a mask. Uh, the audience wears a mask. You walk around and they, they they do dances and they reenact Macbeth. I yeah, I, I saw the same scene like three times. I was always walking into a room while everyone was leaving, yeah. so I was like always like things had just I know missing that it, and then I accidentally left. 
Like I left where the the, the thing was happening. And then before the I final missed, scene, yeah, I missed the, I missed final, the scene. final scene as well. I got At the end, Macbeth hangs didn't himself. Do a right, very good job. Yes, and um, I, I just, I left. I said I needed a break. I'd gone early, so I'd been there for like two and a half hours. Yeah, and then I, I left, and then suddenly everyone it. poured out, and they were like, "Oh my god, he hung up." <laughs> the best thing. Yeah, me and my friends were drinking in the little speakeasy, yeah. and they were like. Y'all should probably go inside because something's happening. We were like, okay, thanks for that. Yeah, that's nice. Because I was exhausted. It's a cool atmosphere, though. You know, no, it's yes. it's so cool. It's amazing that you know people don't fuck it up more often. Yeah, because there's like bo- there's bodyguards that kind of because the dance is like all over, so they'll yeah. kind of move the crowd. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of choreography. It's it's incredible. It was it was incredible. Um, well, uh, Joyelle, I'm so glad you made it because uh, we we talked about this already, but I booked Joyelle for a show. Uh, uh, at Sesh Comedy Club, she even shared the the flyer that I posted, and Tova said to me, "Joyelle's not doing that show," and I said, "Excuse me, this is not this is not you know beneath her." Was this in the and, middle of the show? And, no, it was like Excuse like me. the week before, and I was like, "She shared it," and said Tova's like, "No, she's going to the which award show?" Oh, WGA Awards. The WGA Awards <laughs> that night. And I was like, "She shared it though." She shared it. She's gonna. I, and then absolutely. I wrote you. I said, Tova said. You're not doing my show. You're at the awards, and you're like, right? Yes, I am. I am. <laughs> Listen, I forgot about this today. Yeah. <laughs> like I was sitting on my couch, and I got the notification on the phone. Email, got the email, confirmed the email, mm-hmm. everything. That's why I need a new assistant. I'm, I'm like testing out assistants, and I, I need one because I, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a do do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was like, JL is not gonna be there, and I was like, you are correct. I will not be there. I will be dressed up on a red carpet. And I think Tova wrote you. You had I loved you had a purse that said pro choice, pro abortion, pro abortion. I am pro abortion. And I, I asked Tova to ask you if if they sold one that was pro life. Yes, you did. Just I for, said boo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to go take a nap. <laughs> um, no, I loved it. It was it was a uh, where where that come from. Uh, there's an artist, Michelle Pred, who makes those purses specifically. They light up, so they got like bands off our bodies, equal pay, and um, she basically she'll have museum exhibits with them. They're they're pieces of artwork. There's a battery inside to make the words light up. Yeah, and so we've been yeah. wearing them all over the country. Um, the women. So whenever I have like a red carpet, she'll ship me a bag and I'll wear it. Did Did you get any any hate messages back that said how dare you? No, I mean, just general, you know, people just be like, you're going to hell. And I'm like, duh, <laughs> that's where the fun people are. Um, uh, well, how was that award show? Was it good? Was that your first? Oh, You've so had good. two big award shows recently. That Yes. Critics Choice Awards as well. I had the Critics Choice Awards, which was my first award show. Um, so much fun, but non-televised ones, a little messier. Yeah, uh, in a imagine. fun way. Oh yeah, everyone's getting drunk. We were right by the open bar. It, it was fun and messy. We Wait, were in there. Was Critics Choice not televised? Critics Choice was televised. Oh, okay. WGA wasn't. So oh okay. It was the a speeches lot must be better yeah. because I feel like you don't need to thank everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We we got a. It's so boring. It's so. But boring. I understand yeah. why you need to thank all these people. Yeah. And I think we need to just change the custom that like. You tweet out your thanks to the people. Yeah. And you make a fun speech. Make a fun speech. Yeah. That's what I would rather do. I'd rather make a fun speech. But yeah. I always thought that. And now I've, I've you know, known enough people who I'm dependent on for my any success. And I'm like, ah, I do have to thank them. I have to thank them. I have Tova. to thank them. Yeah. You got to thank Tova. What award would you th- thank me for? Thank you. Like if you if you won, you how dare you? I guess if I won best co-host of a podcast on some fake podcasting thing, what else would I thank you for? Podcast couch. What what award would you thank me for? If if I won a if I won a lifetime achievement award. I would think that I would include you in that in that time frame. Listen, but if you go in that deep, that's a boring speech. Can't, yeah, I feel like you, that you encompass like friends and the friends that know who that they're included know that. You yeah. know what I mean? Okay. You just said that. You just I mean, said me, don't be saying random. Me, and Chris, names. and Douglas would know who you're talking about when he said friends. <laughs> You'd be like, he doesn't have a secret group of friends that we haven't met. Yeah, it's just us it's three. Just the three of us. <laughs> It is true. It's scary. I got a lot of eggs in these, this basket. Um, oh my god, dude! Did you? What did you? 
Did you win any? No, we did not win. Um, Inside Amy Schumer won. So mm-hmm. I was nominated for Pause with Sam J. And then Inside Amy Schumer won. And SNL was also in the category. And that was funny because um, what's Homegirl's name from Marvelous Mrs. Na- Maisel? Uh, the lead? No. Uh, oh. Mad TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Alex. Uh, Borg. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Her name? With these two names. Bornstein. Bornstein. Bornstein? Yes. Yeah, okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the irony was she pronounced my name right, so I was very um, <laughs> I was very happy about that. She pronounced my name right. But for the SNL, she had to say like 40 names. So when she got through that, she was like, whoo, <laughs> bitch. Yeah. She said 40 names. Can I tell you a Sam J story? I, I, I think I can share this story. Sure. So I don't know Sam J particularly. Yeah. But one day she came to the cellar, and I think I think she was on shrooms. Sure. Because she said she was on shrooms. Sure. And she sat next to me, and we like talked with a table of many people for like fifteen minutes. And the whole time she was like rubbing my head, and I thought to myself, "You're not gonna remember this at all, <laughs> and I'm gonna remember it and know it forever. And I will look at you with a fil- familiarity that you will not think is earned in any way, shape, or form, but is in fact." A hundred percent earned on my end. Wow! And sure enough, sure enough, there's no way. There's no, no way she knows. That's so funny. I yeah, I doubt she I knows mean, that at all. Just like just the whole, just like so. Yeah, I went to the. <laughs> Was and, it just a texture thing? Like you know. Yeah, I think just just uh, just this feels nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. For the whole 15 minutes? Was no one else I, on, at the table acknowledging this? Yeah, was yeah, anyone she, else she, like, what's going on? I think she just announced, I mean, they assumed we were good, good friends. <laughs> <laughs> best, best good friends. <laughs> wow, I had no idea Jamarco and Sam J were so close. <laughs> someone she would thank in an acceptance speech. <laughs> Sam was not at the WGA Awards for her own show, which was fun. I always say to myself, I tell Tova all the time, I say, I'm not going to do this award show shit. Yes, you are. You I'll are do full it the, of shit. <laughs> okay, yes, I'll do are. it the first time round. The first time round. But I want to I wanna be the person that doesn't. I don't think I'd enjoy it. I don't like dressing up in a suit. You are a liar. I'm, no, I'm going to buck the you system. You bought this pink trucker yeah. shirt. You like to dress That's what up. I, well, I want to wear something fun. I just think it's it's tough to be it's just tough for a guy to wear a cool outfit. No, it's not. I love what the the guys are doing on the red carpet. Donald Glover, always yeah, yeah has Donald Glover, fun. yeah, but Donald Pedro Glover Pascal. is cool. But I'm not cool. Donald Glover is cool. I don't know how I'd play it. You're yeah. a tall man. You're a tall. Dude, thin but you man. like Shut you up. like you like wearing clothes. I'd wear I'd wear colors. It'd, it'd be something funky. You are a, an entire peacock. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think I like it. With your chest and your shoulders, you have your razzle dazzle shoulders shoes. out. <laughs> he no, got I, sparkles on his titties. You are. When it comes to me and Tova, I'm definitely the the more like colors. Like Tova yeah. still has this old Isla Chabad thing, where it's just like wearing all black. Isla Chabad. Chabad. Oh. Uh, uh, it's word. a sect of Has- Hasidic Judaism. Oh, I yes, think yes, it changes yes. every goddamn time Tova tells me what it is. But that's what she grew up in. But they, you know, there's there's not a lot of fashion going on there. So we went yeah. clothes shopping the other day. Tova put on this outfit, black pants and a pink thing. And then we left. And I said, did you get the pink thing? She said, no, I just got the black pants. And I was yeah. like, what the fuck? And I went back yeah. and I bought her the pink thing. Oh, look at you. You like pink things. I do like pink things. Good. Yeah. I, I told you if I um could, I, I think someday I'm going to transition into just wearing the same outfit every day. That's my dream. Yeah. Oh, would, would it be black? It black, would be. It would be the. Shirt. It would be the Louis C.K. special. <laughs> yeah, I would no. I don't, actually. I think the jeans are too. Um, I don't. That they're they're too. I don't know. I, I don't want. I'm not connected to jeans. I think it would be like some kind of like. I don't want to say sweatpants because that feels like sad. But like a higher end sweatpants. See, I'm working higher on higher end, end sweatpants. sweatpants and a black shoe that looks nice, but it's a. You wear on. this on stage at the cellar. I have worn this on stage. I wore it to the last brunch show, and Esty loves the way I dress. Mm. Like, I tell new comics, if you're auditioning at the cellar, dress up, because Esty loves, like, the old, she wishes comics, like, oh, care really? about how they dress. Yeah. John Marco's um, in a suit tonight. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> Peacock. 
So um, I, I, and I love playing dress up. So she'll always be like, oh, look at your, I love your, you know, Essie just always compliments That's a good impression. Me. Thank you. Um, but I wore this, the brunch show, because I was exhausted. I was on stage like 2.30 in the morning that Saturday. And then I had to be there for the brunch show. And I wore this. And she was like, I even love this. This is fantastic, too. So so just confirm, like, you wore this yesterday. Uh, last week. Oh, oh last I, well, week. this is my everyday. Oh, that's your everyday. Yeah, I have like two of these sweatshirts, and then I have another one that says Abortion Yacht Club, and I wear Abortion them with Yacht the, Club. Yeah. Did that? Did that come with an abortion? They gave it for free. Uh, unfortunately, not. But did you talk in your special about having an abortion? Absolutely. I am the abortion girl. Yeah. Yeah. How many? One. Just one. Just one for me. But I, for everyone, I want them for everyone who wants. Of them. course. Do you mind me asking how late into the pregnancy you got the abortion? Yes, actually it was in the second trimester. Really? Yeah. Did you did it take that long to find out? Well, it took a while to find out but then also to schedule the appointment. So, mm, sure. Um, I was shortly in just like 3 and a half months. That's and what was there what state was this? New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah. What's the cutoff point in New Jersey? Um, I actually don't know what the cutoff point is. It I think you're you might be allowed to have it all the way up because the thing about third trimester abortions it's a very specific procedure that not a lot of women get and there's only like three doctors in the country that can do it. Are you serious? Yeah, and they're like in their 80s. Oh my god, <clears throat> I had no idea. I so so even in places where a third trimester abortion is a, is it's legal, legal, yeah, you might not be able to find the person. To do it. Not only find them, schedule it, and it's a very expensive procedure. Yeah. It's like thirty thousand dollars. Oh my god. Like that. Yeah. And I imagine there's a lot of states where it's not legal. Most states. I like I think Mar I think you can do it in Maryland. Maybe this, is New this York. even is this pre Roe v. Wade? There were still a bunch of states that wouldn't allow that. For sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Third trimester. But third trimester is also Life of the mother, life of the baby. There, if a woman wants to have a kid, she's not waking up, you know, in the third trimester. Like, I just think I'm gonna have an abortion. No, this is a woman who wanted her baby. I see. Yeah. Who either found out she's gonna die or the baby's gonna die, and that's why they have to get the procedure. Yeah. You know. Oh, I just it's so it's so difficult scheduling a foot doctor. I just can't imagine. Can you imagine? And, and it's we're on a time clock here, baby. Yeah. Like, it, and, it's and you crazy. you know that the person whoever runs the front desk is like they can see you in ten months. Absolutely. And you're like, hey, no, 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 no. We Absolutely. Can't, we cannot do that. Yeah, yeah. I met one of the doctors. He lives in Omaha, Nebraska. So he spends three days in Omaha, travels to Maryland, three days in Maryland. That's his life. He's, I think, 82 years old. And that's his whole week every week because he's so in demand because he's the only, he's one of the few that can do this procedure. Holy shit. Yeah. So it's like when we say we're under attack for actual lives, like he's saving people's lives, mm -hmm. you know? Is he making some good money? He must make some good money. Yeah. It's got to be a scary life, though. I mean, he must but, need security. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. They, I mean, mother you don't want to be the, the yeah. well-known third you. trimester yeah. abortion guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. People are trying to kill you. His friend is... Uh, That's like, hey, don't go in. Don't, don't review me. You don't have yeah. to review me. Don't worry yeah. about yeah, it. Yeah, they killed his his friend. They did? <laughs> yeah. Did his friend help, or he just, just to make him no, sad? No, he was also a doctor. Well, yeah. he was also a doctor. Just like his friend. I thought it was just like, we'll kill every one of your friends. He was me. They hosted a podcast together. Yeah, yeah. The hell are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> they held his friend hostage. Oh man, um, when you when you got it, yes. was it was it nothing for you? Did it feel? I had a friend who got an abortion recently, yeah. and like she certainly, you know, uh, couldn't be more pro abortion. Yeah. But but it was still it was like I think you know for a couple of days she was sad. Absolutely, yeah. And that's the thing where it's like. We're not fighting for this right to be like, yay, we're just in the streets. We'll purchase for everyone. Yes. No, this is a decision that you have to make that's going to, you know, potentially change your life. Sure. So it is a heavy decision for a lot of people. There are some people that are a little bit easier, like, let's just go. I was one of them because I was raised by a mother who was a nurse to my father who was an abortion doctor. Oh, oh my wow. God, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. My dad be dead. <laughs> so, yes. So, like... I, I always knew, it, like from a young age, my mother always talked to me about it. She was like, if you ever get pregnant, let me know. When I told her I was pregnant, she was like, what do you want to do? You know, she left it up to me. She was like, I'll even help you take care of the kid. I was still in college. So 
that's the thing where it's like we you know you'll still have issues you still might need to talk to a therapist about yeah, it yeah, yeah. you know because because the world's telling you you're a murderer <clears throat> yeah sure that's not easy I, luckily i just had a mother who's fully supported me and a lot of people do not have that Tell me about your your dad, because I, yeah. I know I know you, you. I didn't know he was an abortion doctor. Yeah. First of all, is that is that a certain field, or is he a OBGYN? Or OBGYN, yeah, he's an OBGYN, uh -huh. but with a specialty mm -hmm. in this. Yeah, so he became a doctor in the fifties, a black doctor in the fifties, which is very hard to do. And then Roe was passed in nineteen seventy three. So there was a lot of money to be made at that point because women were doing it. Not only illegally, but very unsafe. Yeah. Allison Libby had her abortion show yeah. where her mother had to get an illegal abortion. They blindfolded her and put her in a car. Yeah, it was like and, a mafia thing. Yeah, yeah, like a mafia like yeah. bag over the head. So when it became safe and legal, I mean, he was in business. He, my mother said they were taking cash. And my father was a wild, crazy, like fur coats down to the floor type of black man in the seventies. Even in, in the hospital too, he was wearing. Oh like yeah, a yeah, yeah. He was he was like a famous doctor in New Jersey because it like women would come all over the East Coast to him because he was he developed a procedure that made it um, painless that he could do it into. You did this motion. It's a oh, like he would snip a nerve and and it made it. Uh, painless procedure oh my god yeah so he, he told me this story once where it was 5 p.m on a friday and this white woman comes in in a fur coat with her 15 year old daughter and she was like my husband is out of town i need this today and he was like oh i'm closed and she's like well people told me that i need to come to you and he's like but i'm closed and he said she pulled out a thousand dollar bill and he never seen a thousand dollar bill before and this was like 1979 wow <laughs> and he's like open up room too <laughs> Wow. Like the 5 p.m. abortion on a Friday. If someone showed me a $1,000 bill, I think I'd be skeptical that it was real. Yeah. I mean, For I would sure. definitely be yeah. like, Googling, like, like, is this money? a real thing? Yeah. yeah what? Back in the 70s, you know, I feel like people were very trusting of things. You know, like, probably. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. He didn't, he didn't have, have Google. The technology to, like, make a fake bill in there. Right. Who has that? You know? Who's on the $1,000 bill? Dude, I don't well. know me. <laughs> Harriet Guys, Tubman. Guess what? That would be funny if, they, if that was the Harriet Tubman one. They're like, we'll put her on the, the thousand dollar bill. bill. Wait, I feel stupid. I, I didn't know there was a thousand dollar bill. Uh, Most people don't. I thought I know. Th I know there was a five hundred. I doubt they print them anymore. All right, guess. Who, are we thinking it's a president? It's a president. It's I think president. it's a president, or or it could be like a Supreme Court justice or some shit. Let's see. It's a president. It is Roosevelt. Wait, no, Roosevelt's on something more important. Um. It's it's. Guess what? So you got it. I'm gonna pretend. I'm not even gonna pretend. It's to, not to have Nixon. Any idea. It's Ford. It's Gerald Ford. Gerald. <laughs> Wait. Okay. You're one of that. It's Gerald Ford. <laughs> That's uh, my guess. No, wait. Hold up. Okay. I, okay. There's fake ones here. Well, uh, just Google the thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know how to Google the thing. All right. Let's see who can be quicker. Um. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. This is so funny. This is, is there. Who can the real thousand? No, there is a thousand dollar bill. The question is who's on it? Unless your dad got scammed, and we're finding out now. Listen. Okay. Here it is. Here it okay, is. Okay. I see it. It is Cleveland. Grover Cleveland. Grover, Grover Cleveland. What up, Grover? That's the a thousand. And then there is a 500 one, too. Oh, my God. There was a 10,000 and a 100,000 no. in circulation. Oh, Who is no. On After the last printing of those de denominations in 1945, the Treasury Department and the Fed discontinued them in 1969. That's literally for narcos. Wow. <laughs> that is all, that's the only person that's for. They're still legal, uh, tender. legitimate tender, but are limited in circulation except for the $100,000 bill, which is only ever used in fiscal channels. Yeah, yeah, for illegal shit. Yeah. <laughs> Fiscal channels. McKinley is wow. the 500. Jefferson's the two. The 200? The two, the $2 the $2 bill. Dollar bill. Oh, oh yes. you can get those, though, you know. But I, I don't know why whenever I get one, I'm like, ooh, and I yeah. save yeah. it. I never spend yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. My I have dad $6 said he dollars just sitting he in He didn't spend drawer. that. He, like, framed it. He framed it? Yeah. Oh, my God. I would have spent it. When he, you said he's, he's, he was a deadbeat dad. What do you mean yes. when you say that? What's your oh, he definition? Oh, didn't let me call him dad or <gasps> acknowledge me as his child. But I knew him because my mother was his nurse. So I would like hang out with my siblings. I would like go to their house. Wait, did, uh, do you have multiple siblings with, with your mom? Or? No, I'm no. her only child. Oh, okay. But he has, but I have like. Did he have another family? Whole oh, yeah. family? Whole and family. And that was like 
his like real family. His real family, yeah. Holy okay, so, shit. so he, he had he had his he had his family. Yes. Your mom was a nurse. Yes. And was it, and did the sorry, I have so many questions. No, but but he 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 was the he was she was his nurse. Yes. Did he understand the power dynamic? Might not be fully fair. I mean, <laughs> nineteen eighty um. one. <laughs> That's what we were discussing. Women's rights. <laughs> back back then. Well, I just wonder, like, was that common at hospitals that doctors were always fucking the nurses? The doctor? Are you kidding? The black doctor? You know how much pussy is being thrown at a black doctor in the 70s? Yeah, he was yeah. fucking everybody. I got mad siblings. And when when your mom got pregnant, yeah. did she ever, I mean, you can't not have the thought you work at the clinic where all the abortions are happening. Oh, no. She, she said she was on her way to get the abortion, and then she started hemorrhaging, and she was like, oh, I think I want to keep this baby. She told me that. Wow. Wait, the, the hemorrhaging made her want to keep the baby? <laughs> yeah. she was like, what does that mean, hemorrhaging? Just to blood? Bleeding, yeah. And that... I don't understand the logic behind that. It it's feels just like a different thought. Be like, yeah. oh. oh, and when she thought she could lose it naturally, she, she was oh. like, oh, I want to keep I you. Want this. And, and she had an abortion before me. Oh, I see. Yeah, with your dad, like. No, I, I think with someone else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did do you know if your dad at the time was like, you're keeping it? Oh, he told me he was like, I told your mother to have an abortion. What do you want from me? <gasps> oh, da 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 da, stand up comedian. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Villain Wait, origin story. Does, so he had this family. Yeah. Did, did they know about you and your Absolutely. mom? Absolutely. I would knew. spend time with them. They knew. Yeah. The wife, you spend time the wife, with them? His, did he have a wife? Yeah. She knew. Was she yeah. nice to you? Yeah. She was great. Uh, to this wow. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So she, she was, was she friendly with your mom? Yeah, but she didn't find out until I was 15 because uh, she was having an argument with her sister and so she found out that I was really his daughter and she was like I am so sorry and then was like we're changing everything I'm putting you in the will and all this type of stuff like she she was that's basically really... in denial for 15 years and then it wow. was put in her face but that's do you like her do you admire her for doing that well I I can understand that perspective from a woman because it's like, well, all we were taught is that you get married. She actually was a doctor herself. Really? So she'd done a lot for her own life, but it's also still, you know, you're a woman in the 70s. You got to get married. A woman black doctor in the 70s? I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so is she still alive? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're you're in good terms with her. She didn't mm -hmm. like resent you. you. You could see a world where someone doesn't like I don't think it was malicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, she's already in her, you know, cheating ass husband relationship. I felt yeah. sorry enough for that. <laughs> How did your relationship with your dad evolve over time? Oh, it was terrible. Um, we, <laughs> he, he just couldn't, you know, you disassociate and you compartmentalize enough to where you get to your old age and you're like, oh, you're my daughter now. And I'm like, you never acknowledged me as a kid. And he's like, sure I did. And I'm like, no, you didn't. So he was like a gaslighter until the end. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know he was your dad from the beginning, yeah. your memories? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but you were hanging out with this other woman. Were you told not to tell her? Oh, I wasn't told anything. So when I finally like told my sister and brother, I was like, I'm your sister. They were like, no, you're not. <gasps> and I was like, but I am. And my brother goes and asks my dad. He was like, she says she's my sister. And he was like, no, she's not, like in my face. So other, wow. other villain, wow. yeah, this is all the And then the day where he said, I told your mom to have an abortion, was that yeah. like a big fight? Like, was there ever like you going like, Hey, fuck you. Oh, so the fight was, it's my sister's graduation from college. We all fly to Florida for it. Um, I'm by myself, my mom, um, so I'm with them. And they're going around the room and they're like, everybody say something great about, you know, my sister. And so we get to him. I'm standing right across from him in this big circle. And he's like, you know, I'm so proud of you. You're my daughter. You're great. And he's like, and, you know, Ernie is my brother. He's like, you're next. And you guys are my kids. And you guys are so great. And I love you guys so much. And you're so great. And I'm just standing there like this. And then it's like the single little <gasps> tear starts to go. So I, I kind of step out of the room and like <gasps> run to the bathroom oh, sobbing. No. And then he comes in and says... I told your mother to have an abortion. What do you want from oh me? Oh, my God. No. And I was like, I'm already crying. Oh, my God. So his And actually, at that moment, I was like sobbing. And then his wife, she's like stroking me on the head. She was like, God don't like ugly. So he's going to get his. Like, she said that to me. So she was. A bit and this was after way. she knew. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I was like 18. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Are you I'm crying so now? I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm oh. just emotional. Oh, yeah, God. Of I uh, wasn't expected to be talking about this. <laughs> No, it's no, it's a uh, yeah, yeah. That's it's a just mind so, fuck. And and so 
Did your father pass away? Yeah, yeah, he died right after I did Seth Meyers, so he got to see me do television. And is that when he was like, okay, you're my daughter. Of course. You got a late night credit. Of course. Sure. Oh, he put it on Facebook. He's like, my child, look at my oh. daughter. She's so great. <sighs> Thanks, bud. Holy shit. <laughs> was it when, when he died, did you, did you feel anything? Oh, I mean, it's... It's so many emotions. And so luckily I'd been in therapy and my therapist was like, you're allowed to be every like angry, sad, yeah. uh, regretful, you know, guilt, you know, all the, all the things you're allowed to be. She was like, we just need to process those emotions. But she, what did happen was I did get to have a conversation with him about it. Um, NPR was about to do a story on us. Um, <laughs> and I interviewed him in, in about, you know, my childhood and that the whole entire interview, he was denying that I was telling the truth. And the producer was like texting me while I'm interviewing him. She's like, stay strong. I'm so sorry you're going through this. And then afterwards, she's like, there's no redeemable quality in your father. We can't even air this because he's such a terrible person. Oh, my yeah. God. But I got to have the closure enough for that, like holding his feet to the fire, looking him in his face and being like, yeah. dude. you know." But realizing he wasn't a capable you know, person, which... Yeah. Had a very high IQ, but no EQ, as my mother would say. Sure. <laughs> yeah. It's just fascinating to think. I just wonder what it was, whether he felt shame about cheating or he just like oh, couldn't no. couldn't figure out a way to emotionally understand. Well, he wasn't well, technically cheating the, because while my mother was pregnant, his uh, girlfriend was pregnant and he went and got married. So... My whole life, I thought they had been married. They he, they got married while they were both pregnant. Oh, yeah. my God. And my mom found out at the hospital from other nurses. They were like, Dr. Garrett got married this weekend, and she's pregnant. With she's like, what's kid. the goss, ladies? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like in the nurse's station. <laughs> I feel like we had another guest on here, similar story about the dad denying it all the way to the end. And I think it feels like there's just a, a certain point where – it's there there it's almost impossible for them to be like because you're like like the real truth of it to accept yeah. that is such an undertaking yeah. and if they're not willing to do that they can convince themselves that yeah. no that's not what happened i did I, I didn't ignore you for for decades you know what i mean like yeah and, they, and they like, have to acknowledge like, otherwise that. it's a huge undertaking that they're just yeah. unwilling to do yeah. and it's easier to just say no that's not the truth that's my not father made me understand trump Mm, yeah. And why he's constantly lying. Because yeah. Because if you admit the terrible person you are. Yeah. You should leave the planet. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not like an isolated incident. It's not like a thing. It's no, like it's a, a pattern a of commitment. It's a commitment yeah. for decades yeah. to be like to, to shut out someone and their their experience in their life. Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. It would be funny if your dad came back to you and said, Joyelle. I've accepted Jesus Christ into yeah, my heart. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Can we please but just... he was a science man, so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That. Wow. Yeah. I always, I'm there's always like, the there's always like a, a fan. I, I think about that scene in There Will Be Blood. You've seen that movie, Russell, right? Have you ever seen There Will Be Blood? Mm -hmm. And Daniel Day-Lewis, remember the preacher is like forcing him to be religious. And mm -hmm. he goes like, yeah. I've abandoned my child. Yeah. I've abandoned. And it's always like, could you, could you, could you hold someone's foot to the fire that they like, that they break yeah. inside. But also in that moment, he's just doing it so he can get that fucking money. But it's a mix where he is Do doing know, it just to get his money, but I think but he also is like... But he's through. having, to like, he's having yeah. to like put himself down there to do it. But it's like, yeah, yeah, it's a mix. Two well, things can be true. That's so true. <laughs> yes. Um, Yay. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Wow. That oh, my very, gosh. Yeah. We, Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, solidarity to anybody with some deadbeat dads out there. Um. Oh, there was one more story I did want to tell. I I did a, I did a hosting seminar recently. Don't ask why. Paid. Paid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> and uh, I, I I hope this doesn't come up as cruel to the person. So so people were asking questions, and and some guy goes, uh, you know, I have a joke. New new comic. New comic. I have a joke, and it really works with my friends. But it never works on stage. Oh Jesus Aww. Christ! And and I I was like, tell it, and everyone is going like, yeah, tell it, tell it, come up, and oh, no. and exactly <laughs> the moment he stood up, I said, 
Nope. <laughs> you knew. <laughs> it's racist. Oh, it's a no. racist joke. Oh, I, the no. moment he came up, the moment he came up, I was like, it all clicked. Your friends laugh. People don't. He stood up and you could see he's wearing a Make America Great Again <laughs> shirt. And you're like, oh, no. No. He's wearing so, the Joe Rogan yeah. experience shirt. <laughs> he wasn't white. But he wasn't black. Okay. Okay. That says uh, a lot. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to take swings. Yeah. 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 I'll do it for you. I think he was Indian. Okay. But he goes up and and the joke. Uh, it was basically it's it said. Oh no. The moment he stood up, I was like, "Fuck! What have I done?" So he goes. The New York Times said that black taxpayers are. <laughs> Audited more, more than abort. you're like you're like abort abort. <laughs> the abort. I was abort. like, oh, oh no! You're like, you're like, oh, you're like no. Wait a minute, you're black. Like, yeah, you're like, never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind, <laughs> sir. Sit down, sit down, sit sir, sit take a seat. Sir, take a seat. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. Start again. Oh, no. Sorry, start again. <laughs> and also, you got to add on to this. Everyone in the room. Wants this to go well. Yeah. Yeah. The whole audience is like, look at this kid. He got oh, up there. Jesus. Uh, okay. The New York Times says uh, uh, that black taxpayers are more likely to be audited, um, which was surprising. I didn't know black people paid tax. They paid their taxes. And then he said, just kidding. The New York Times doesn't interview black people. <laughs> and then, and it got, it got a real like, Oh, like, like they they really wanted it to go well, but they couldn't. They couldn't say this Wait, was okay. First of all, you talk to your friends like that. <laughs> well, that was. <laughs> well, immediately I stood up. I said, "Stand up, full stand up set for your friends." I like, said, "I said, you know, sir, that is my friend Russell's joke." Okay. Uh, <laughs> and okay. And no, I I like I tried to, I tried to to break down why like joke wise structurally it didn't fully makes sense it relied on even like stereotypes i don't even think are tr quite all right no quite one like a thing about yeah and 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 then the third thing i said jokes yeah. aside okay you know so i'm just watching uh, so i've my uh i work with R R rose the drag queen uh, uh in Titanic. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. so i've been watching his season of rupaul's drag race Which and, season? uh season 13 oh what wait so roseanne Rose, the drag Rose, queen. I yeah, love yeah. Rose. So you did say Roseanne. It would be funny oh. for a full Roseanne <laughs> drag queen. So I work with Roseanne a lot. Um, oh my God, Rose's um, in uh, it. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is Rose's dream. Yes, yes. Oh my God, Rose's <laughs> amazing. So uh, we've gotten friendly, and so I, I've never seen Drag Race. So I was like, I was like, I'm gonna watch his season. So, but they have a, a roast. Uh, I thing, just episode. watched it, and okay, that roast episode was so stressful. I just watched it today. It's so stressful. Yeah. Because this one drag queen. Does not get roasts, and in the coaching, <laughs> just being mean. Utica, it's they're so mean, so mean. Like being like, sorry, I I thought you spoke whale to like a yeah. fat person, just like and then being like mean, just fat, like doubling down on the fat thing, but like <laughs> just so and she's mean. This skinny, Utica's and, the, and this like, big. And like and like and like keeps being like. They keep being like, okay, it's it's mean. They're trying to coach <laughs> coach him to be like, it's it's too mean. Yeah. Like try this and they're like, and then he really doubles down on being oh, yeah. meaner and yeah. like, and it's not funny at, at all. all. And they and put the crickets on. Oh, oh. It's so so, so they, do it. They, they do it. They do it live. Yeah. They do it. Yeah. The, we'll the coaching. The coaching was more stressful to me than the than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than the actual roast, but um, the actual roast it, it kept the jokes, didn't listen to their notes, kept the fat jokes, and uh, is really uncomfortable. So why it was more stressful for me is because we're also in pandemic mode, so they didn't have an audience. Oh yeah. yeah. So he is performing for the judges panel. Yeah. The other two queens he's well, roasting, and the other queens he's competing against. And the comedian uh, Lonnie, uh, Lonnie Love. Lonnie Love. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's uh -huh. so awkward because yeah. even if there was maybe a crowd, maybe he could have got a couple laughs. Sure. From yeah. a crowd, but it was still like so. It was not many people in the room. No. So it was extra quiet. <laughs> for real. That's <laughs> but that's brutal. a really hard thing if you're not yeah. if you're not already like, you know, because there was a few people that didn't do well it's just a very specific skill yes, and very um specific. holy shit when the people with the, it, the slight thing like you could even have someone do something and it, it, with the tone of voice and the thing it just like reads as so mean from someone and so can yeah, be yeah, so yeah funny with from someone else it's interesting. It, yeah. part of it's just that the joke's not but if the joke isn't a real whale, trying to speak whale <laughs> 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 Like that, one's, that one's gonna be a hard one to sell. 
dude. No matter what. <laughs> and oh, but and, and then he said something really mean to Lottie, and she was the only oh, yeah. one who laughed. Yeah, no. Well, she goes, she goes, she goes, bitch. I'm. She's like, bitch. I'm. I, I, you're the one bombing. Yeah. Because it was like it was. <laughs> Like he Lottie made fun, oh, he made fun of like her not doing not being uh, like used to the crowd size or something uh -huh. for her show and and she was like bitch you're the one bombing up there yeah. and everyone like really laughed oh, at that like oh, uh, man. it was bad there's there's a roast out there um I don't know who it is but I know Jamie Foxx is on the panel this video it's for me Doug, because I always Doug put my Williams. I always put oh, myself in the the loser's position. Yeah, me too. And so there's like an, a comic up there and he's trying to do a roast and Jamie Foxx who is like brutally funny in a way that's not fair given that like you know he's an, a, a highly acclaimed actor now. He's so funny. Yeah. And so he goes to his mic and starts playing this guy's subconscious like ooh that joke didn't do very well. I guess I'm going to have to try. It's and relentless. like it 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 destroys it there's no recovery from it. Yeah. There's no way to get back from it. Yeah. And and he does it the whole it was clear Jamie Foxx must not like this guy. I, I just think Jamie's an asshole. You think he's an asshole? Yeah, I think he's just a jerk. I, it was so funny, but so, so cruel. Mean. Yeah. It was what so, was so cruel. Uh, it was Emmett Emmett Smith, the roast of Emmett Smith. Oh, okay. So it was a so, bunch of black people on the panel, and th there's comics who make jokes about how black people don't necessarily write jokes. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, when we roast them, we like, look at your shirt, look at your shoes. But a, a white person's like, uh, you had a deadbeat dad who uh, said he wanted to <laughs> abort you. Like, that's, that's how white people roast. <laughs> and so you can tell Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Doug had, like, written, had some prepared written yeah. shit, and... Jamie did not let him get a word in edgewise. And honestly, I'm like, Doug talks about it in interviews of like how his career has sh oh. struggled since then because that Yo. it went so viral. And I just remember that video is the reason I will never do a roast. I will never do a roast because no, of that video. No, no. Yeah. Somebody not, not, you, not, I, oh my, if you see this video, it is the scariest thing. Like from a comics perspective, that is the scariest possible situa situation. I'd rather be at a Klan rally. I think... <laughs> The only, the only solution is you gotta laugh with it. Like what makes it worse, he really tries to like. He looks like he was going get to back cry. on the horse, yeah. but but like you know, it looks like he's gonna cry. He's trying to get back on the horse, and there's there's no. There's nothing. There's nothing. And then there's like this other comic who's like running around laughing like in circles. <laughs> <laughs> That's also not happening on a white roast. No. You know, Frank Sinatra's not getting up like. Ah, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Dean, you said that shit, nigga. No, that's oh not happening. Oh my um, God. Yeah. Someone running around you. And Monique was trying to help him. She was trying uh, to be like, yeah, baby. Like, she was trying to be nice. Oh, she, uh, she tried to subvert it with her mic? She tried to help. That is a nice, uh, she tried that is to a help. nice gesture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I Holy was just like, shit. Jamie, because Jamie had one, but he's doubling he's, and he, tripling yeah. and quadrupling down. And it's so funny, but... It's the saddest thing. I didn't think that was funny at all. Just like from the comics perspective, I, it's the most cringe for everything. Yeah, there. I mean, there's a thing I know with a couple comics where they'll kill and they're funny, but I'm like, you're you're not you're being mean. You're mean, <laughs> but to to be able to be good at roasting, I think you have to be mean. The yeah. people who are the best at it. Yeah, are mean. kind of. Mean, but they're. Yeah. But I think they're. Those kind of roast roast battles is one thing, but this is like a roast. We should have fun. Yeah, but I, those, I don't know. Guys, I, those guys or those people that are really into roasting, I think ultimately they're just a little mean. They're mean. <laughs> I mean like, so the they're ones mean. that are so good at if it. If you're good you at know? roasting, you're mean. Yeah. yeah. You have to be. Yeah, there's just people where I go, I'm like, oh, you're being a, you're being a, you're hogging the stage. I don't know. I did I did a show recently and it was like at New York Comedy Club and it was like a weird kind of competition show that I was hosting. Yeah. And the comic who I know well, like came up after my rough host set. It was rough audience. Yeah. And like joked about like, well, that one didn't work really well to me on stage. And I was just like, are you serious right now? Are you, what are you doing right now? Was it was he black. Mm -hmm. So that's, so in black rooms, have you, you you've oh black yeah, rooms. yeah. Man, listen, I've been roasted before by the hosts after bombing where I had to sit there and I was like sitting right in the center and he was like, this motherfucker should fucking kill herself. That fucking terrible set. Fuck this stupid bitch. She thinks she's fucking funny. Crowd. Ah, ah, feet, everything. She should kill herself. I ah! mean, he, 
He was so, and I start, I like started crying. I was new in comedy. I was maybe like three. And then he was like, "Tell us about your dad." Yeah, basically. (laughs) And uh, dude, it was so crazy. That comic has since died. And I remember when he died, I was like, (laughs) (laughs) like, not sad for that. (laughs) I I always tell people, uh, Whitney Chanel Clark. Do you know her? Uh, Yeah. She did a show. uh, It was like a karaoke. You did a you did a set, then you did karaoke, and this comic went up. This white comic went up. And, and when he went down, when he came up and said, guys, I am so sorry for that. I am so sorry I made you guys see that. I'm, I'll never book him again. And this was like a, a comic from Queens who yeah. was not used to this at all. And then the DJ played. Womp, 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 womp. Absolutely. And I the was. DJs are I was, <laughs> But there's such a mix. I got to tell you, like, because I worked at LOL for a long time. Yeah. And I think and any talent I have, a big factor is it is that I worked with some mean black yeah. comics oh, yeah. for a couple years. Yeah. And it made me go, when I need to kill, I know what... Ken Boyd... Have you ever met Ken Boyd? Yeah. I mean, Ken Boyd, he would boo me from the back of the room. Oh, yeah. And that's something that doesn't exist in comedy. Oh, yeah. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Oh, that's so cool. Absolutely. There's yeah. all these different eras of people who work there. And I worked there like towards the end. Yeah, yeah. Of, I was, of I was what it in was. it and... I mean, you're you're talking to crowds at two, three in yeah. the morning, mm-hmm. and it's like it, they're, they're they're foreigners. They don't know what's going on. It, that was a but it made me so. It gave me so. I I learned a lot from Ken Boyd. Absolutely. I mean, he he killed, and now he's like doing cruises. I haven't seen him in so long, and I had to block him on Instagram because I posted a picture, and he said, "Wow, you're getting fat," and I. <laughs> and- <laughs> And I said, like, I said, you know what? We're I'm, not LOL I cannot bitch. have that in my life. I don't want that thought in my head. Him. Your, big, your biggest teacher, though. I love <laughs> it. My, my, my guru. <laughs> your mentor. He was brutal because you, you, could, you could hate him and, like, he could be an asshole, but he was so charming that he would, like, Google. you'd be laughing. Oh, man. Yeah. Real town. I'd love to have him on someday. Um, uh, all right, let me see. Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, the one one last thing I did I did want to, to bring up was uh, uh, your your gun. Yes. Do you have a gun on you right now? No. Speaking of which, did you see there was a, there was right an LOL now. comic who shot someone on the subway? Someone I worked with a bunch. I forgot his name. You worked with him? Yeah, like I heard a bunch. the story about it. I didn't know. You, you yeah, he was on the subway and when? he he shot someone. This was like a month Why? ago, I think. What? Why? Um, Is he in because because the audience member wasn't laughing hard enough? <laughs> okay, shut up. No, why uh, did they really shoot someone? No, I mean some just some kind of altercation. You don't have the full story. Uh, uh, I'll, like I'll pull Aroma. it up. But like, but like, I mean, we work together a lot. Shut up. Do I know this person? Um, LOL <clears throat> comedy. Uh, we don't have to say his gun. name. I mean, it's say it to me. It's literally in. Show the, me his uh, name. It's literally in the news. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's we're gonna Goog- say his it's name. Googleable. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I won't say his name because I do know him. I mean, we work together a lot. Well, he Are, did shoot someone. You, he did shoot defense. someone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you did shoot someone. Yeah, I mean, a man. Were you hanging out? So there was a there was a fight. No, not really. A fight on Manhattan subway. Comedian who was slated to take the stage Saturday night in Times Square. <laughs> it's very funny, like to be like to call LOL stage at this point yeah. is, is kind Yo. of a the alleged crime clown. This is the New York Post. The alleged oh. cli- crime clown. His name Thirty, who performs under the name is on the bill at LOL Comedy Lounge at West 46th Street. Ooh, wow. No, I don't know him. You seen him before? I don't know he him. He was like a later edition to LOL. Was he funny? Where's the name? I, yeah. I mean, you don't know him. Oh, This isn't someone like... No, I'm looking up to see if you follow him. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was with a female companion. They were fighting with the victim just after 1 a.m., so probably came off a bad set. Oh, for sure. And as the train pulled into Canal Street and Broadway, the comic allegedly opened fire, firing off two rounds. The victim was taken to the hospital, and they're fine. In his defense, I have wanted to shoot people during and after LOL sets. So. I've gotten scared uh, twice recently where an audience member left after some, like, it was a gun jokes. And in my head, I'm like, they're going to come back and shoot me. Yeah. They're going to shoot me. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a hard time to be a comedian, guys. Uh, uh, so is. you have a gun. Uh, yes. What kind of gun? A uh, Smith & Wesson M&P shield with a laser sight. Mm-hmm. With a laser sight. Do you have it? You're, are you allowed to have a gun in New York City? Before I no. ask the question I'm going to ask. No. Okay. So you left this gun back in I Atlanta. I left this gun in Georgia. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when did you buy it and why did you buy it? I bought it on election day. 
2020. And I bought it because of Election Day 2020. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Was the store, was it crowded? Oh, it was crowded with black people and Asians in Georgia. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. You're serious? That day there Absolutely. was like an influx? Absolutely. That, that year, um, black women were like, the, the rise in gun sales wasn't black women that year. Uh, but yeah, it was black people and Asian in, um, I think I was in Tucker, Georgia. God, the NRA yeah. just can't lose, man. They just win every goddamn Absolutely. time somehow. Because I was trying to find a gun store that was not a Trump supporting store in Georgia. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Wait, you were looking for yeah, like really the, liberal the, gun the liberal store? gun store? Where, 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 where's liberal the gun, gun store with the I'm with her sticker yeah. in the front? <laughs> so fucking funny. <laughs> Goofy. Every gun store I've ever seen has a picture of Hillary Clinton as the yeah. target, let alone. Yeah. No, they had the Hillary Clinton um, shoot the rage things. Oh. You, you want to say it's like Black Lives Matter and that's why we're having a sale. If yeah. you're black, 20% off our yeah. Smith & Wesson. Oh so it was, it was a Trump pest side and this dude, I tell you, the guy selling uh, me and my cousin the gun was this hood dude from Brooklyn. And he was like, yeah, so this is the one I like to do. You know, sometimes you can hold it straight up, but you can also put it on the side. And then he's just like, the guys in the back like, yeah, so this my gun. And they're like in the gun store with their guns on them. I was like, how many guns you own? He was like, about 14. Like that type of shit. And we bought the gun from <laughs> this hood Brooklyn dude who clearly works with racist Trump supporters. But he was just like, I like guns. So, and I, and I can legally have them wow. down here. You know, I never figured out the joke. But I went to a gun show and I had this gun show bit. Yeah. And like it was it was more diverse than I would have thought for this Florida gun show. And I, I was trying to come up with a thing of like, in a way, they love guns so much it it overrides their racism. Oh, that yeah. it was like this real melting pot of people who just love guns. Yeah. 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 I did you have any I, I would never buy a gun. I think I think in my head I'm like I'm against people having guns writ for large. Sure, for sure, me too. And it, do you see any point in your life where you would sell the gun away or throw it away, or do you like? Do you feel good that you have it? It felt it felt good to have it. Just I understand the feeling of having it in the house because uh -huh. it just makes you feel like if someone kicks in the door, which has happened to me before. I grew up uh, during crack in the 80s and 90s in New Jersey, and our house got broken into a lot. I was in the house alone by myself. And like aggressively, like door kicked open? Yeah, yeah. Like a, a bunch of different times our house got broken into. Um, so I had that feeling of being unsafe from child. Yeah. So the, the feeling of having a gun in the house actually does make you feel a little safer. When you look back on those moments, were you ever in the house when yeah. someone broke in? Alone, yeah. In your exactly. head, are you like, would it have been better? Or would it have weighed on you more if someone broke in and you killed a person? Well, I was a kid. So. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But now, I mean, I, you're not going to know until you know. Sure. You know? Yeah, yeah. I think in my me, mind, if, if I had a... me or you. <laughs> but of course. You. Yeah. But in my mind, if, like, if they didn't have a gun... It's just hard for me to imagine. I mean, it's just I've never done it. I don't know how I'd react. There's a part of me that I'm like, I could see myself being frozen and paralyzed. Absolutely. And not even being able to shoot them in the leg or being scared that I'll miss and it'll ricochet. I mean, have you ever held me. a gun? Oh, yeah, I've done. It's I, terrifying. I, yeah. I, I, did, I yeah. did a shooting range when I was in Houston. and like, Of course. I mean, it's. It's terrifying. I'm like, I'm shaking and I, I, I just go to the gun range so I can get used to holding it, you know, so I'm not nervous to hold it and shoot it. Yeah. 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 It's a lot. So how how did you train a lot with it? Like, are I'm you a like good shot? Five times, yeah, I'm a good shot. I was told by white men. <laughs> wow. I was told by southern white men that did I did. They a good tell you shot. a little bit scared, where they're like, "You're a yeah. really good shot." I was like, "Give me the white man one. Give me the white." <laughs> well, you that's know? what was amazing with this with the horrible shooting. Obviously, where uh, uh, where was the, it was a it was a trans man. And now, now they're like these gun people. All of a sudden, are like, we. See? Well, if you're taking testosterone, you shouldn't be See? able to have a gun. And you're like, you're like, there's no consistency None. in your philosophy, no. and it doesn't matter. It's more that we all know there's no consistency. A lot of people's mm -hmm. philosophies, but it's the fact that it doesn't matter at all. No, you can totally just say a completely yeah. opposite thing. Yeah. Um, because I thought wasn't that a thing with like guns rights? With I don't know if I'm getting the history right, but with. Uh, the, the Black, Black Panthers, Panthers absolutely. where there was a degree of like, you know what, let's get some regulations out there. Oh, because a bunch of Black Panthers, um, it was an open carry. 
yeah. in California. Yeah. So a bunch of Black Panthers showed up to the Capitol building with guns, and they were like, oh, no, we didn't mean y'all. <laughs> we yeah. just met us. Yeah. You know, so I'm a big proponent of every black person that can own a gun, owning a gun, and also registering for a gun if you can, because that's how we will get gun control. That's what's so. I I agree with that. I did. I did. Uh, Earthquake has a show on yes. Sirius XM. It's just me and other black comics, and it got to guns. And normally in a gun conversation, I'd be like, I don't think people should have guns. But in that in that moment, yeah. they were all talking about their guns, and I thought like, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get guns. Get yeah. guns. I, sure, yeah. that's a good point. Get guns. Would you ever own a gun? Uh, no, I don't think so. In- um, I, I, well, I, I've been shooting before. I did skeet shooting and stuff when I lived in Texas. Do you have a good uh, aim? I was okay. I was okay. Um, I understood. I understood when I when I did it. I, this is why people like them. They are. There's a thing, you know, you're mm-hmm. shooting and you're at a range and you're, it's, it's fun, you know? Um, but no, I don't think so. I think it would, I would be very stressful to me just knowing it's all I'd be thinking about is accidentally my, my brain. Yeah. If Tova had a gun, I <laughs> forget yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah. Forget oh my about God, it. Yeah, the, She's the, night you. Terrors, the night, she, the night terrors. The night terrors. Oh my leaving God. The room and like, yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. I can see her shooting me. No, for you sure. should, Where's glad. my glasses? I'm like, they're on the best stand. <laughs> Yeah, please, please. <laughs> this is a night terror. <laughs> no, yeah, no, they shouldn't be um, legal, but they also, in New York, especially in the, in the tri-state, not the tri-state, in the five boroughs, it's very, very hard to get a yeah. gun. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I wonder if there's, I feel like there should be a, a, a movement of sorts of like, we're anti-guns, but we're going to buy guns in the meantime. We're ready to put them away. But we're going to buy them in the meantime. It's like the, the idea of being anti-guns but still buying a gun because that might be the most effective way to, like, fix the system. Uh, yeah. I mean, especially for people of color. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go on to our, our next segment. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Uh, this is where we say something in the world that needs to needs to end. Big, small, personal, private, uh, public. Um, people, people seem to like these. By the way, real quick plug for the Patreon. If you like This Has Got to Stop, so we got plenty more extra bonus episodes, live episodes, uh, uh, and my clean comedy special, The Rats Are In Me, on patreon.com slash downside. Only five bucks a month. Join, leave, just give us a little tip, whatever you like. Um, uh, we, we, we all should do this, gotta stop. Okay, you you go got this, first. gotta stop? You go first. Um, okay, let me, wait, I have this little, uh, do you have a this, gotta stop? I don't. That's fine. Think of you, you can totally think of one. Um, uh, uh, here's what I would say. Oh, this has gotta stop. Scotty Pippen's wife or ex-wife <laughs> yes. said that Scotty Pippen was so into sex, they were having sex four times a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I am sick of this shit. Yeah. I'm sick of these insane numbers. They're lying. Oh, of course they're lying. It's insane. But the thing is that I remember when I was a teenager and believing that shit. Yeah. Four times, it's it's not even worth entertaining. How would you get anything done? Yeah. How would you get anything done? How would you get anything done? Four you, times yeah. a day. Get out of How the bed. How often are you showering? What? How often like, are you what's... showering? Uh, 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 there's just there's just no way. And also, like, I could, I still, four times a day, I don't believe. I could see maybe, like, maybe a hand job here, sex over here, four full full sessions of sex. Yeah. Uh, you know, where do you find 20 minutes every single day? Did yeah. you? <laughs> 20 minutes? God to- damn. The four added up. <laughs> But I I remember, I remember, I feel like, I feel like um, uh, Nicki Minaj at some point being like six times a day. And I'm like, get out of here. Especially pop stars. Pop stars, I'm like, you're a workaholic. You're a a workaholic. You're working every second of the day. You're not doing this. Shut up. why Why do people lie like that, do you think? Did you see Cardi's response? No. She was so funny. She was like, look, if your man is fucking you four times a day, either A, he on perks. Or B, he trying to convince himself he like pussy. <laughs> I like that, the flip. Wow, yeah. sex with women that much? You must be gay. Yeah. <laughs> um, you do a great Cardi B. Do your Cardi B. <laughs> uh, for, so, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why they do it because... The it only is, people believing like, them are like, like fifteen-year-old boys being what, like, "Whoa!" It feels so juvenile. It feels like high school. It, it feels is. Like yeah. It feels like very like you, like you just started having sex. Like like for Scottie Pippen's like sixty. I'm like like it, it's like a sad like why? <laughs> well, she was saying, and it was like, who are you? Who is this for? Who is yeah, this live yeah, for? Who is this live for? I don't understand. Like because the other adults in the room are like, 
sure. No, you're not. Yeah, like any like, any oh, real adult like, will go. Are you sitting on an ice pack, ma'am? Like, <laughs> yes. calm, like what's going on? What down kind there? of basketball Pussy, player like, could he have been yeah. if he took a little? If he did three times a day, he'd be Michael Jordan. Me? Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, no, that's absolutely ridiculous. And who wants it? I don't want that. Four Four times it's day. a lot of work. That's a. It's just it disrupts the day. Even every There's day. There's no way to get anything done. Every day is not feasible. No. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that a couple is... times a week in a loving relationship, maybe. So yeah, I yeah. want the interviewer to be like, logistically, how? How? Yeah. Like what are we down. talk about? Quickies? Yeah. What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is sex to you? Like, I'm, I want to know what a full sexual I experience think that, is. I think that you. you'd get them down. They'd be like, well, kisses can be sex. I'd be like, <laughs> no. knew it. I fucking I knew, knew it. it. Yeah. I knew it. You, and we talked about it. No, that don't count, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> we alluded to it. Shut unless, up. Unless they're telling the truth and we just live passionless lives. That's not passion. No, that's, that's, that's addiction. But that's like, addiction. But like, <laughs> not, yeah. Um... My this guy stop is so I have there's a few people that I uh, I don't want to say their names, but I run into them occasionally. They're not friends. They're kind of tertiary. You know, maybe they live in my neighborhood type kind of things. Uh-huh. Every time I see them, they ask me how long the show is running for. And I have to keep telling them. And then they'll be like, I want to come. And, and I'm like, I can't do this conversation. Anymore. Leave me alone. I can't. You either got to come or or we're ignoring each other when we run into each other because <laughs> I can't keep doing this for you. And you keep delaying when you're going to come. And the thing is, they're not a friend. It's not someone that I need to come. It's not like I'm expecting them to come. It's just the only thing that they could talk to me about in a, in a, like they're, they're maybe not that confident in, in their, in talking about anything else. And, and, and yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so it's something that they can connect with me on. So, but I'm like, you either got to come to this fucking show or you got to like Shut ignore up. me when you see me. Cause I do not want to do this conversation again. Do you think you're prepared to say it closed? <laughs> like before <laughs> it closed. You should say what show? Yeah. <laughs> Next time, just pretend we've never had the cover. I'm like, what? What? what are you? I'm not on a show. What are you talking um, about? Uh, but because that's the only way out of it. They'll do it for the rest of this run. Yeah, I'm. I've gotten so I can. Uh, I, I get, they're not listening to this. It's my. It's a neighbor. Um, I've or say it's so, running forever. Yeah, say you yeah, know yeah, what? Yeah. I've decided I'm gonna stay in it for the next ten years. So anytime you're ready. Yeah. So I'm just. I've gotten so I can avoid running into trying to you know but still it happens you run into them so you hear that people who want to see russell's show no fuck you, you always fuck turn you. these things you always turn, I, i'm saying it like listen i'm not i'm truly not talking about no, a friend please a uh, stand-up comedian i understand every uh, time every hello? time when oh, are you performing I, have, I, I got somebody right now who's like i need a weekend show like is responding to one of my flyers like where is this and i need a weekend show and i'm like girl <laughs> I, yeah. I just, I can't, I, and I told you, let me know when you want to come out. Let yeah. me know. I will probably have a show. Yeah. Just let me know. Why don't you tell me when you're performing? I'm not doing that. No. I'm not sending you my seller available. People ask like, me that. To, oh, I will send them the text I got. I will screenshot the text Ooh. I saw and send it to them. Now what? When are you coming? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, you're yeah. not, are you? I'm not yeah. copy pasting everything. I'll give him Esty's number. I say, you call her. <laughs> you call you tell like her to give me the spot. It's I'll like say the equivalent yes. of running into someone in New York and you're just like, oh, we should meet up. It's like that thing. They know you're doing stuff. Yeah. And so they can just give you a blanket thing. But then that becomes their whole relationship with you. It's yeah. just being like, I want to come. I want to I want to see a show. And you're like, but you you can. There's so many opportunities. There's so for many you. opportunities. I'm so, performing. Uh, I do this professionally. Uh, we, don't, we don't have to do this dance. Like just either yeah, come yeah. or just get out of my fucking life. <laughs> I do not yeah. like that energy of a yeah. person yeah. because I literally I like about to get tickets for tomorrow <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to go because I'm like I actually want to go and people go be, to the show tomorrow. Yeah, I want to go one. tomorrow with Tova. Yeah, Tova, yeah, uh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you said Tuesdays yeah. you need a laugh. Uh, <laughs> look, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> I love it's a dead audience and then one person like <laughs> Russell. <laughs> You said there's a black uh, person in the audience tonight. <laughs> She's just front and center. Yeah, um, no, that's full of it. Yeah, no. Do you ever this has got to stop? Yeah, I mean, I have a couple things that I could say, but what was I just thinking about? Because I, I got so engaged with what you were saying. You could edit all of my rambling out, right? Yeah, probably not, loves though. He loves, <laughs> probably not, though. He loves the edit button. <laughs> Let me think. Okay, this has got to stop. Oh, um, people pretending that they love being parents. Here's the thing. Um, oh, 
it's okay to not to not be happy. I have been following regretful parents on Reddit. Oh, that's a it's oh. a fantastic Reddit thread. Wow, wow. And and those parents are so happy to have that community to be able to complain about their kids. And I just feel like more people need to be honest about it because so many people are becoming parents against their their actual intent of life. And it's like it's okay to not want to be a parent, you know. Yeah. I'm on team no kids and it's okay to be on team no kids. And if you're on the fence, don't do it. Because you're become a regretful parent, so everyone's trying to pretend like they're all happy. Y'all ain't all happy, and yeah. that's that's okay. But let the the next generation know. Yeah, because they <laughs> always say too, they're always like, um, you know, I, it changed my whole life. Oh. I couldn't imagine that. Blah, blah blah. But you're like, of course it did. Of course it did. Of course it did. You added a whole different thing. But like, if you didn't do that, you could still have just a, 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 as a fulfilling kind a of thing. But like, there's life. no way to to make it make sense if you you can't have it and then without being a terrible person without yeah. being like I had it don't like it you yeah. know like wanted to send yeah. it back you can't you can't yeah. otherwise like you're there's a it's fucked up so like th that's the only option you have is yeah. to be like it completely changed my life I'm fully fulfilled I'm now so happy. blah 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 and like I'm not saying they're not I think they feel that but I'm also saying there's no there's no way you could not have been yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, it's it's it's, it's you've, you've you've passed the point of no return, right? There's so, no receipts. You can't no, take the baby back. No, you can't. So <laughs> it's just this thing of like, yeah, it's not like uh, because course. like if you, if you tell your friend about like a relationship, and you know it's it's kind of tough. They might be like, well, you know, if if, if you want to break up, you know, you that might up. be wise. Yeah. But with a kid. What can they say? No. They'll be like, well, like, well, in 18 years, 16 more years, maybe they'll, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll yeah. leave the house. Maybe they'll leave maybe the house. Maybe they'll leave the house. Maybe you know? they'll leave the I house. I have a stress. This is not a fool. This has got to stop. But I have a friend with a kid. I I think she listens. And, and, I, and I love this. It's more of my own thing. But sometimes parents will send you a video of a moment with their kid. Yeah. that they had that was really special. Uh -huh. And I always feel this pressure that I need to, for them, it's a life-changing moment. Their kid walks for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Their kid does a cartwheel. And I feel like I have to really meet them because this is so important to them and they've shared it with me. Yeah. And sometimes I want to be like, thumbs up emoji. <laughs> <laughs> just I just there's a degree of I'm like yeah that's or sometimes there's like they'll send so many photos and so many videos and I'm like we could <laughs> we could have like, we could have gotten it editing like like yeah, yeah, can we yeah, make yeah. A, you're like let's make, make some, a montage let's make some creative choices of which ones we want <laughs> to sending, send to you yes. you know this is a seven minute video of them yeah. doing one thing let's wait till he gets the walking down a little you know? better yeah. before <laughs> I see the yeah. journey yeah I send back a clip of my special that's available on Peacock that's my baby <laughs> oh my god God, that's so funny. That's so this smart. This is my child that actually gave this? me money. Did you see this? <laughs> um, oh. All right, let's go on to our final segment. You better count your blessing. Ooh. You better count your blessing. Jail, do you have a blessing for us? Absolutely. Yes. I am so blessed to be at a point in my life where I do not have children. I have disposable income and a refined palate. So I've been going dining at restaurants that are very fabulous and expensive. And Hell last night yeah. I went to a place called the office of Mr. Moto, which is an omakase. Oh, yeah, yeah. You heard of, heard of it? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, the reservations only open at 10 a.m. at the first of the month. And it's a short, there's like 10 seats in there and it's an omakase sushi style restaurant. And then they have a speakeasy in the bottom. So I went last night and ended up talking to the couple that was sitting next to us, set up my friend on a blind date. Like I had a great time last night. Hell we were yeah. in that place for like four hours. All right. If, if I'm, if I'm planning, if I'm planning a meal there and I'm paying and it's me and Tova, yeah. what should I be prepared to, to be putting down? You got a, um, you got a car that got miles on it. That has miles on it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're using that card. Uh huh. And you, you're going to spend a good seven. Wow. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I did. I think the most expensive meal I've done so far, and it was a it was a gift for my stepfather, but then I don't think he paid me for it. So it was just me. Yeah. It was a no boo meal. Yes. And yes, because no because boo. we thought it was my stepfather, I think it was like five, five fifty, six. But it's two of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. Yeah. I mean, I've been to 11 Madison Park. That's a fun yeah. one. That's a good 400 per person yeah. type deal. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love omakase, so I've uh -huh. been going to omakase restaurants all over the city. Most expensive yeah. meal, you and Nicole? We, uh, I mean, we, we, we could do some damage. 
uh, we're both eaters, drinkers. Um, probably like seven, eight or so. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, like a nice thing. I remember a couple of years ago we did a thing that was definitely like six. Um, but I, yeah, uh, yeah. When you, when that tip reaches like two hundred, you're like, holy yeah, shit! Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Makes me feel the, fabulous. <laughs> I, I was gonna do a close related to food. Um, I went. What day is it? Friday. I went Friday. Oh, yes. I went Friday night to our friend uh, Max of Max and Jessica. He is the sommelier at uh, Lord's NYC, and he took care of us. Ah, I love that. He was uh, like... He made sure we got all, ever, tried everything. He was getting us bubbles. He was bringing nice little sample, like wine things. It was just like a great meal. I really recommend a new place, uh, Lord's NYC. Should I take it over there? Yeah. Um, the food's English. So okay. I would look at like what it, 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 like it's pretty, it's a very specific. I guess I hadn't had like f- nice English food before. You usually have a shitty like fish and chips. Or yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. Like, but it was like, it was like, it was really Really fucking good. Nice. So that does sound good. Th- thank you, Max. Um, my blessing, uh, not let people know this Russell's in a band and I got his band to send me some of his music. Let's play no. it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think I had it? I don't know what you were going to do. <laughs> I, was... I would like Russell to send me the music mm-hmm. that he's been working on for the last 10 years. And I would love to hear a song. It's my, it's my private life. Outside of you, there's no life. Are you really in a band? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. So I like have a secret two band. friends. Uh, we've been we've been playing. We we really started playing around right before the pandemic, and then the pandemic happened. Uh, so we still meet occasionally, but it's hard because you know I'm doing the show and they do stuff too, and it's never. None of us have this thing of like we're gonna be a band. Yeah. Does that make sense? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. but we like playing music together and writing songs together. So yes, we have like. Uh, eight to ten songs that we've written and kind of recorded demos of and at some point we'll probably do some live shows but it's so low key I'm that, there that it's like you know I don't talk about it a lot either because it's like it feels very it feels so different from any of the performance comedy or stage mm-hmm. or you know it just feels like a whole different thing well, that good I, it's your I, little I, secret thing it just feels it feels nice it feels like um i don't know i don't have the connection i don't I, it's not i'm not dependent on it to do well does that make sense? sure 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 but it feels very personal on some yeah, yeah. level um well, I'm, I, I will see. We'll, we'll plug the live show. You'll have a bunch of Debbie Downside. This will be oh great. Um, I, I want to say, I think Tova is, is setting me up. I think we're paying, but a, a good price to see Anthony Jeselnik live oh. on tour. And for me, that's a big one. I'm a big Anthony Jeselnik fan. So I think she's uh, using some industry connects to get us some good tickets. But the, the other thing is Tova related on Saturday. I got a call from Tova. Yeah. I pick up the phone and she's sobbing. She's oh, sobbing. No. And she says, you know, I, I, I was walking down the stairs on the subway texting. And I always talk to her about this. I was texting. I, 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 and she can't even speak. She can't even speak. She's weeping so hard. And I was like, I put away my laptop. I was, I was away. I was in Louisville. I was like, are you here, baby? What's wrong? Uh, what can we do? What can we do? And she, I can't get through to her. I can't get through to her. And then she goes, April Fool's. Oh, my and God. And she got me so <laughs> fucking bad. <laughs> so fucking bad. And... Like she, you know, she, she, she's a performer and she, she did it. She did it a hundred percent. She was crying the way that she cries. Oh my God. And I do tell her all the time about texting and going down the stairs and cause she can barely walk as it is yeah. without, it's <laughs> well, like someone with one leg putting yeah. on a roller blade. Well, it's door, like, let's focus well, on one thing at a time. Uh, uh, so I was not happy in the moment. <laughs> My, I mean, my adrenaline was through the roof because I was like, I mean, it sounded like, oh, am I going to have to fly home from Louisville right now? Yeah. Like, yeah. this sounds really bad. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I respect it. And it's important. See, I would have put that under, this has got to stop. <laughs> April Fool's. <laughs> I hate that. I'm so happy yeah. my boyfriend is not into that because we would break up. I, I don't like that shit at all. Because I'm black in America. People be dying. And if you're going to yeah. make me think... <laughs> Somebody dead and then ain't nobody dead, bitch. Yeah. I will kill you. <laughs> don't put yeah. I got I got a life expectancy that's short. Anyway, don't make my blood pressure grow up like that. I ain't no Tova was I, like that. I think it's funny if, if Tova did a prank with all her clients where she called you and was like, You got SNL. 
Oh my god! <laughs> no, <laughs> god, no, god, no! That wouldn't no. work. That wouldn't work. <laughs> no. Or oh. she called and was like, "I'm audition? dropping you." Okay. No. Oh, to please tell someone don't ever do nothing like or that other, to me. Or the other <laughs> way, I'm keeping you as a client. <laughs> April, April Fools. Fools. That would be a good way to so, yeah. tell her. Joel no. does not like <laughs> to be pranked. <laughs> Just the white clients, Toba. Just, Just the white, the white ones. Clients. Just the white straight male ones. Those are the only ones you deserve to prank. Um, all right, this is coming out. April 25th. What do you want to plug? Oh, I mean, maybe something. There will be fun, fun things announced by then. So until then, just watch my special mm-hmm. Love Joy on Peacock. And and where can they find you online? Uh, you can find me at Joyelle Nicole. And Russell, what would you like to plug? Um, follow me on Instagram at Russell J. Daniels. How long is the um, show running for? You motherfucker. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tuesday. September. September uh, come see Titanic at the Dale Roth Theater. Uh, I will be at the mic drop in Chandler, Arizona, <laughs> April 28th, oh, 29th, and 30th. That sounds horrible. <laughs> oh, oh. I perform in so many cities that don't have an airport yeah. dedicated to that city. Oh God. That's terrifying. Uh, yeah. Then I'll be at uh, uh, Governor's May 5th and 6th. And uh, come on, where's, where's a one-nighter where I get some of that sweet, sweet money? Uh, hilarities, May 26th and 27th. We're going to Ohio for a wedding, one of Tova's friends. And uh, uh, of course I think, you could not book a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I told them to get married around the gig. Um, so check that out. Hilarities, May 26th, 27th. And again, join the Patreon. You get to watch my, my new clean comedy uh, special that's not getting released anywhere else. Bonus episodes, live episodes, our episode with Joshua Henry. Um, it's, oh, it's, I love Joshua You know Joshua Henry? Henry? Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Um, and uh, you're looking at your phone expectantly? Um, no, I'm texting some of my next thing. I'm sorry. Texting Joshua Henry? Texting my next appointment. Okay. This is the downside. <laughs> downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi.